Hey y'all, I'm so happy that you are here for this new What's for Dinner. This was such a great week of meals and the first one that I want to show y'all are these chicken and dumplings. These were hands down the best I have made yet and trust me when I say I have tried several different recipes. So the first thing I'm going to do is add in some bone in skin on chicken thighs to a large pot and cover those with water. The original recipe did say to use eight to nine chicken thighs but all I had was four and I knew that would be plenty for my family. So I'm also going to be adding in one one teaspoon of chicken bouillon powder just for some extra flavor or you could of course use like one chicken bouillon cube. I'm also going to be seasoning this up with some thyme and some salt and pepper to taste. So I'm just going to turn that on high heat and get that going to a hard boil and then I'm going to place my lid on, turn it down to about medium and I'm just going to let that cook for about an hour to make sure that that chicken is fully cooked through and I'm just going in there with my tongs and carefully removing that chicken to a separate plate and just look at how gorgeous that chicken broth is that it leaves. It's so rich and flavorful and I'm going to be using it for a couple different things throughout this recipe. So one of them is this creamy gravy. So to a separate saucepan, I'm adding in two cups of the broth, two cups of milk, milk, six tablespoons of cornstarch, and just some salt to taste. And I'm just going to whisk this over medium heat for about six to seven minutes just until it thickens. This step right here is what set this recipe apart for me and made me so intrigued to try it because I thought, you know, that's different. Um, and if you are against like cans of cream of chicken soup, this is a good recipe for you. Um, so now on to the dumplings. In this small mixing bowl, I have two cups of plain all-purpose flour. I'm adding in one tablespoon of of baking powder, one teaspoon of baking soda, and half a teaspoon of salt. I whisked the dry ingredients together real quick and then I added in a quarter cup of shortening and I'm just going in there with a fork and cutting that into the flour or if you had like a pastry cutter or blender, um, you could do it that way also. Then I'm going to add in a quarter cup of that broth from the pot followed by one cup and a quarter of buttermilk. I know I said that weird just now but... <laughs> I'm trying to memorize it all. Uh, but yeah, I just whisk that together. It's going to be a really wet mixture. And then this is all the broth that I was left with. And obviously that's not going to be enough to make dumplings. I didn't have any like extra chicken broth on hand. So I just quickly made up a batch. So I'm just adding some water to my pot and using that same chicken bouillon powder. And I'm just going to let that quickly come up to a bowl. And then it is ready to drop those dumplings. And as you can see, I'm just using a regular spoon to drop that dough into the boiling broth. That first one made me a little nervous because it looked like it kind of disintegrated a little. And you definitely don't want that. But it all ended up working out just fine. So I'm just going to repeat that until all of the dough is gone. Then I'm going to pop the lid on and turn it down too low and let that simmer for about 10 minutes. Meanwhile, I was working on my chicken. I just removed the skin and pulled it from the bones. And then here's the dumplings after they are fully cooked through. I just kind of gently press those down into that broth and now I can add in that creamy gravy that I had made a little bit earlier followed by that chicken. Chicken thighs is the best cut of chicken in my opinion. I do love chicken breasts but when it comes to recipes like this chicken thighs is where it's at. It just adds so much flavor but it is done now. I'm just gently stirring everything together and letting it warm through for a few minutes. So this is a little time consuming, but it is not difficult and it is 100% worth it, I swear. These dumplings are absolutely perfect and so fluffy. If you have never had this style of dumplings before, you gotta try it at least once for me. There's just nothing like it. And that creamy gravy made all of the difference. The seasonings and flavors were just on point. And I served it with some fresh corn on the cob with some butter, garlic, salt, and pepper. But yeah, this is a recipe you definitely wanna save. There will be a link to it down below in my description box. Up next, I'm going to be air frying these jalapeno cheddar smoked sausages. I cooked them at 400 degrees for about six to seven minutes. These are so darn good. I honestly forgot all about them and it has been forever since I have bought them. But anytime we have these, it makes me think of summertime and it just puts me in the best mood. And then to go along with these, I also roasted up some red potatoes. So I just washed these really well and then I quartered them up and threw them into a large mixing bowl. Then I drizzled them with some olive oil and I seasoned them generously with some garlic salt, dried parsley, lots of black pepper, and some Parmesan cheese. I don't remember ever roasting potatoes with Parmesan cheese. I mean, I'm sure I have in the past, but I have been missing out because it took these to a whole nother level. These were bomb. 
So I just spread those out onto a nonstick sprayed foil lined cookie sheet and I bake those at 400 degrees for 30 minutes stirring halfway through. I seriously need to roast potatoes more often because they are just the best side dish. So now I'm going to assemble my smoked sausage. So I'm using these brioche hot dog buns that I got at the Walmart bakery. I love how it's cut at the top. I have never purchased hot dog buns that are cut that way and it just makes so much sense. And plus I just think these look really nice and they taste great. And I'm going to be topping these with some coleslaw. Let me know down in the comments if you love coleslaw, like on top of hot dogs or hamburgers. I think it makes it so much more amazing, and I have been craving this. And this coleslaw turned out perfect, which doesn't happen all that often for me. Um, so I shredded up, or grated up my cabbage, I should say, with my cheese grater. And I prefer that consistency so much more versus like the shredded cabbage that comes in like the pre-made salad bags. Um, I also grated in a carrot, and all there is in there is some mayo, sugar, salt, pepper, and a splash of vinegar, and I let that sit in the fridge for several hours. So that was delicious. Absolutely loved it. And then, of course, I threw on some of those potatoes, and this meal was just all around perfection. Not too long ago, I tried the Olive Garden chicken pasta that was all over the internet, and we loved it, even my kids. So, I know that some people commented and said that they hated it because of how tangy it was. I actually think that's what drawed us to it, but you know, everyone's different, so I wanted to, like, recreate it and swap out the dressings. So, instead of doing the Olive Garden dressing, I'm trying out the Buffalo Wild Wings wing sauce and the Parmesan garlic flavor. So, I have two boneless skinless chicken breasts, some Parmesan cheese, rotini pasta, cream cheese, and some milk and I'm just going to add everything except for the pasta to my crock pot and cook it on low for three hours. So here's what it's looking like after the three hours. As you can see, it's getting really brown around the edges. So I feel like if I left it in any longer, it definitely would have burned. But that chicken was cooked perfectly at the three hour mark. I know that a lot of recipes call for really long cook times on chicken in the crock pot. And I've never understood that. I've tried that like once and it completely ruined it, dried it out. I just don't agree with that but anyway so as you can see i'm using my little meat chopper to break my chicken up and then i have dumped in a little over a half a box of that rotini pasta that i have cooked al dente and drained off the water and i am just tossing all of that to combine so here's what it looks like all served up. This was insanely delicious, like so creamy and packed full of flavor. We loved it. Um, it was really hard for me to decide which one I liked better, the Buffalo Wild Wings or the Olive Garden. But after some thought, I think that I liked the Olive Garden slightly better, probably because it did have that tanginess. Um, this one was a lot less tangy. So if you were one of those people that hated that, this one would be for you. And I just paired it with some cool and raw veggies. So I have some cucumbers seasoned with some lemon pepper seasoning. And I like to dip those in some of the Bolthouse Farms Ranch. That's one of my current favorite snacks. And also some carrots. So that purred, purred, that paired perfectly with this meal. I know that I'm late to the game on this one. I'm sure this is something that's been sold for years and years, but honestly, I don't really buy stuff like this in the freezer section because I've had bad experiences with stuff like this in the past, but thinking back, I blame microwaves for that and just my younger self 
having a lack of knowledge, I guess. But these beef and cheese taquitos cooked in the air fryer are phenomenal. I promise you. It's a new staple in our house. All four of us love it. I cook them at 400 degrees for eight minutes and they turn out perfect. I don't show the kids plates often, mainly because as soon as I make their plate, they want to grab it and run and I don't want to make them wait to film. But this day I got lucky. So they just have some Mexican rice and some tortilla chips on the side. And then here's my plate. Josh is looked basically the same. You can have five of those taquitos for 350 calories and I think that's pretty good because they are really filling. Um, I like to dip mine in some salsa. I also told Josh I think these would be amazing dipped in nacho cheese sauce. So I'm going to do that next time. And this is my homemade Mexican rice that I've been making for years. I will have that recipe linked in my description box. And I also have some lime wedges to squeeze over everything. So yummy. Okay, for the last meal idea, I'm doing a ramen stir fry. This is actually a vegan recipe. Every now and then I'll get a comment asking for vegan ideas. And although that's not really my thing, this was incredible. So you'll need two packets of ramen, doesn't matter the flavor. Um, and then you'll cut up the veggies of your choice. I'm doing zucchini, broccoli, and carrots. And then in this sauce, all it is is some vegetable broth, soy sauce. The recipe says to use molasses, but all I had was maple syrup. Also some sriracha and some cornstarch. So the first thing I'm going to do is drop my ramen into some boiling water. I'm only going to cook that for a minute and a half um, and then I'm going to strain the water off and run it under some cool water. I'm also going to go ahead and heat up a couple tablespoons of olive oil and then I'm going to dump in a big spoonful of minced garlic. The recipe did say to use fresh um, ginger. That's not something that I would use that often so I'm just using some ground ginger that I already had in my pantry and I'm just going to cook those together for about a minute or so. And then I'm going to dump in my raw veggies and I'm going to saute mine around for about six to seven minutes. This honestly just depends on your preference. This will leave them tender but crisp and that's not normally something that I would go for but in a dish like this it works so well. So now I'm going to add in that half cooked ramen and it will finish cooking as I stir it around. I'm also going to add in my sauce at this time and that cornstarch will of course thicken up the sauce and it's going to help coat the noodles perfectly. I found the best way to toss everything is with some tongs. And to be honest, this is a meal that I had all to myself. I know that my family would not touch it. So I made it while Josh was at work and the kids were at their grandparents. So I enjoyed this out on the deck. The sun was shining. It was a good time, my friends. So I just topped mine with some dried chives or you could do some like fresh green onions. But yeah, if you are a person that loves ramen and you struggle to get your veggies in, I highly recommend this. Like, I can't wait to make it again. I loved it that much. But that is going to wrap up this video. I hope you found at least one thing that you would like to try. And if so, let me know down in the comments how you liked it. I'd love to hear that. But thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all have an amazing week, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye, guys.